Good morning, everyone. It's so lovely to be with you today. My name is Paul Weaver, and it's my joy to be able to share with you the devotion today that's around our current uh, theme of community. A community has been defined as a group of people living in the same place or having the same interest. A good community embraces qualities like sharing and values, commitment, and many, many other things. Recently, we have been shocked by the death of Olivia, a young nine-year-old girl who was shot and killed in her own home. And the community around were numbed and questioned so many things about their existence and what was going on in their community. We could ask the wider question, how can such a thing happen in a so-called civilised society? Well, the Bible has a lot to say on community. In fact, creation stems from the community of God, the Father, Son and Holy Spirit. The first human that was made was a man and he was alone and was incapable, therefore, of experience community at a mankind level. Loneliness is the absence of community. God's solution was simply a woman miraculously created out of the man and God chose a woman to partner Adam because community cannot be sustained without reproduction and reproduction requires a man and a woman. The first community in Eden was a great place to live in. I'm sure you would have loved it. Every evening God would come down to share with the new community of man and wife and this first community of human beings had really everything going for them. Uh, the environment was perfect, uh, a relationship with the perfect God and a pure, holy, innocent uh, relationship and union between Adam and Eve. Community at its best is one of the most powerful forces in the world. It enables people to do together what they can't or find difficult to do on their own. And so the Bible talks about the power of unity, the power of community. Solomon says in, his, in Ecclesiastes 4.12, two are better than one because they have a good reward for their toil so they can accomplish more together. And though a man might prevail against one who is alone, in other words, a man fights someone and he, he, he may prevail, but it's a difficult battle, if there were two, they would really be able to withstand him. A threefold cord is not quickly broken. Here we're looking at team achievement rather than individual performance. Solomon uses three, a three chord image to illustrate the divine and the human working together. A community environment enables the quality of sharing, supporting, and diversity of skills to lift our outcomes to another level. We have examples of this all over our land at this time of rising poverty levels due to gas, electricity and petrol increases. There are drop-in centres for food, clothing, school uniforms and many other areas of need. Many of those people who start these drop-in centres have themselves experienced hard times and they bring together a group of people who have a shared experience of life and they come together to seek to help others to weather the storms of life. The enemy of course of community is self-indulgence at the expense of other people. When you promote self the letter I in the word community ceases to be a team player. Community is disadvantaged by such selfishness. And in the end, the one who has chosen self above community enters a lonely, unproductive existence. Because mankind was designed to work in community and as a community and not in isolation, it was given by God a set of values to live by. The biblical story is all about the challenge of living by God's standards 
for the well-being of mankind. Unfortunately, due to selfishness, that historic journey has had a checkered history of ups and downs. Having said this, we see in the embryonic church in the New Testament an expression of community that we should be seeking to emulate in our church. We find the qualities of community in Acts chapter 2, verses 42 to 47, which I'm going to read to you now. Everyone was amazed by the many miracles and wonders that the apostles worked. All the Lord's followers after, often met together and they shared everything they had. They would sell their property and possessions and give the money to whoever was in need. Day after day, they met together in the temple. They broke bread together in different homes and shared their food happily and freely. While praising God, everyone liked them. And each day, the Lord added to their group uh, others who were being saved. What a wonderful declaration. This amazing church community had committed themselves to devotion of the scriptures, fellowship together, remembrance of the Lord's death and prayer. And the outcome of such a commitment and community of people living with those priorities produced worship, miracles, equality of material ownership, sacrifice, daily attendance at church, successful life groups, authenticity, sincerity, favour with God and numerical growth in the church. None of the above would have been possible without community. The challenge for us as individuals today is this. What are we doing with our gifts and possessions? Where are we placing ourselves? Is it in the community or outside of it? Christians are, were never designed to live in isolation. Their future was always designed to function as a body. Can I encourage you today to engage with others and pool your resources alongside those with the same values and then you will have the joy of community success achieving what you cannot accomplish on your own. This is the challenge for today. I'm going to opt in to work with people of like mind to accomplish the purposes of God. So let's pray and ask God to help us to do that in a simple prayer. Heavenly Father, please help us to see what can be done when we live by your standards and work together to bring change in the world we live and work in. Give us success as a community, we ask. In Jesus' name, amen. Have a good day, everybody. God bless you.